Welcome to Doddington Lane Pits. You join me on the largest of the three lakes here uh, called Moon Lake. And behind me is 50 acres of really untouched paradise. Uh, not many people have actually fished this lake in the past, so I don't really know much too much about it. I know that there's some very old carp in here, 30 to 40 years old, and there's a few introduced a couple years back. But I'm standing here on my own, and I should really be accompanied by Lee Mozart Morris. And we were supposed to be up here doing a Mozart versus, but he's pulled out of it because he was too scared of me. Um, what actually happened was his van has actually broken down on the way up here. Um, so he is at the moment trying to get that all fixed. So he's left me all the way up here on my own, uh, still with Ben the cameraman. So we're gonna try, try and make something out of it. Do a bit of uh, an in session on this new lake. I've never seen this place before. And to be honest, when I walked around here earlier, I'm lucky to stay on my feet because it is absolutely blowing a holy. There's been white caps uh, the other end of the lake, about three foot high waves. It's absolutely mental. You could probably hear behind us um, all the screams of telephone wires and trees uh, going crazy, howling in the wind. So like I said, we had a good walk around earlier and I opted for peg two, which is uh, right up in a sort of corner bay of this lake, not in the main body. Uh, it's a bit deeper down this end and it's just off the back of the wind. So hopefully, like I said, we won't get blown away here. We've pegged all the bivvies out with uh, tow ropes and everything. And uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Cameras are flying everywhere. Rods are going everywhere, but uh, I'm gonna attempt to get some rods out in the lake, find a few spots. And hopefully, like I said, over the next few nights, we'll be able to put a few fish on the bank. So I'm just having a good old lead about in the swim. Um, and yeah, I've got a big expanse of water in front of me. So I do want to definitely find out exactly what's out, out there. And I've had a few chucks to uh, sort of markers on the horizon, to be honest. Um, no one's really fished this lake much in the past. So I want a good marker that I can aim at all session. Um, and I chucked him quite long uh, to begin with. And I found it was quite clear, quite clear. Um, and I was dragging the leg back up on the, up on the bottom just with a bare lead. Um, and then I hit some choddy, choddy area. So I wrapped them up. I wanted to find just past of that choddy area um, where it feels like it slopes down a little bit and then backs up against some old dying weed or something. And uh, yeah, that is exactly where it's gonna go now. And I just wanna duck, triple check that that is the right area, so. Couple more casts in this wind, it's not easy, so it might take a few more um, just to exactly pinpoint that spot. But that seems pretty good. A couple more chucks, like I said. And then, uh, yeah, we'll tie up some bags and get them out there. I've just finished up leading about and I'm very happy uh, with all of my spots. I've opted to fish two rods to a spot, nice clear spot, uh, pretty much straight out from here. And then the third rod, my left hander, I've got a big open bay to my left. So I'm gonna roam around with that one, try and see where the carp are. Like I said, I haven't really seen anything show, but um, what I'm gonna do, I've opted to fish solid bags uh, on all of my rods. So I'm just getting the last of them ready now because I have got two of the rods out. I've put the left one left one out first, uh, put it out quite long, um, basically a bit of a pub chuck, which is a bit unlike me, um, but just to roam around in this crazy conditions to see where the fish are. But like I said, just gonna tie up my last one of these. And uh, I do make them very certain way, a sort of tennis ball sort of size, which is, um, yeah, a little bit odd for uh, different to the norm you could say but they fly out absolutely perfectly and uh, yeah they're quite big they're probably six ounces in the end 
um, but in conditions like this, especially big crosswinds, uh, you definitely need that to get out onto the spot and uh, yeah, to be really, really accurate. Later on, I'll, uh, I'll re-chuck them all just before uh, it gets properly dark, get a bit of bait out there as well for the night and hopefully that'll be the winning tactics for today. So I'm just gonna quickly get this one all done, wrap it up, get it out onto the spot. Well, it's just gone past four o'clock and yeah, it's gonna get dark in a couple of hours. So decided to stop fishing singles because I've been watching the water all day and I haven't seen a single thing. So decided to introduce a bit of uh, bait for tonight because I can't really just sit behind rods. I can't feel confident sitting behind rods, three solid bags out there in the abyss of 50 acres. It just feels like you're not really doing that much. So. I'm going to put quite a fair bit of bait in, um, mainly small little particle bits of bait. Uh, you're not allowed particles on here, but I'm going to put in a lot of pellets, a lot of crushed boily, that sort of thing. Um, and then I'm going to fish two rods on it and then keep the third a little bit to the right. So that's what I'm doing now. And there we go. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing now. And hopefully, that hopefully will bring me something for this evening. But like I said, that. I was watching the water all day, me and Ben both were, to be honest, and we didn't see so much as a splash, um, which, yeah, it's a bit annoying, but sometimes it happens like that, especially in this time of year. So I'm gonna, I was thinking on my feet, and yeah, we'll get a bit of bait out there now, and hope this evening it brings a couple of carp along, because that will make me very happy. Well, good morning, and what a good morning it has just been. Uh, I've got a couple of fish in the nets. This is my first one, and finally, after last night, we've had a break in the weather because it was absolutely chucking it down all night. Massive gale force winds, and uh, yeah, we've had all types of weather uh, now as the sun just peeping through the clouds. But like I said, we uh, yeah managed to have a couple last night that I'm very, very happy about. Both coming off the uh, baited area on the solid bags. So I think going forward, I'll be moving all of my rods uh, onto that spot, introducing a little bit more bait and maybe seeing if we can pick one off in the day. But I'm sure tonight we've got a good chance of maybe having a couple. We'll get this one back, get the other one out that uh, I think is a little bit bigger. I'm not too sure uh, in comparing them yet, but uh, yeah, I think the other one's a little bit bigger. Both just as good looking. We'll get this one back, get the other one out, and uh, yeah, I need to warm my hands up because they are absolutely freezing cold. There we have it, the second carp of uh, an early morning feeding spell. That puts me two ahead of Mozza, um, if he was here, but he isn't, so he's made a, he's put a smile on my face anyway. 
because uh, yeah, it's an absolutely lovely carp. One of the fish that was obviously stocked in here a couple years ago. And uh, yeah, hopefully we stay on another night, maybe tonight get a chance of catching the originals, but we'll get this one back and uh, yeah, I'll probably then go through what I've been using to catch these carp. Well, a few hours have passed now since I had those fish and uh, I just thought it was a good time while the rods were in um, to get a few more rigs ready for this evening um, as I will cast out just before dark, put a bit of more bait out there as well. These were the rigs that I had the carp on um, and as this is a completely brand new water to me, I've never seen it, let alone fished it before. I wanted something that I was massively confident in already and a solid bag, everyone's heard of a solid bag, but uh, for me, no matter where I go, I've always caught carp on solid bags, big and small. So uh, yeah, my solid bag's not really too different to the norm. A three and a half ounce inline lead with a quick chain swivel covered up by a bit of rubber sleeve. Around three inches of 25 pound reflex camo tied on to a size four wide gape hook. As well as that, I've got a small bit of shrink tube, sort of a liner liner style where the braid exits just below the natural exit of the shrink tube. All that does is helps with the hooking properties of this rig and make sure every time that the hook flips right round much more aggressively in the bottom lip. And on the shank of the hook, I've got a little granny knot instead of a rig ring just to hold the hair in place to make sure that hook bait is sitting perfectly every time inside the solid bag. Hook baits for this session have always been pretty simple in my eyes. Uh, something again, I'm very, very confident in. The bait works sent from heaven range. Uh, this time, a very small little fluoro wafter on there. Absolutely perfectly balances, so it just sits up uh, on the deck above all the pellets in the solid bag. I'm going to quickly whip up a couple more bags now. Um, I'll do probably about three or four, just so I've got enough for later when it's just on dark and I've got the bait out, I can quickly distribute all these solid bags back out onto the spots for tonight. Well, it's coming into late afternoon now and just beside me here, I've just knocked up a big bucket of bait ready for this evening to get back out on the spot. And uh, the reason I've done it now, uh, instead of straight away and get it out straight after, is so all those liquids that I've put in can sink into the bait and all the crumb boily and pellets can all absorb all those liquids. So when they're out in the lake, they can release over a longer period of time, making your bait on the floor much more attractive. The first thing I do when uh, creating this mix is crush up a load of Royal Marine boilies. And uh, for anyone who knows me very well, I absolutely love the Royal Marines. Um, I've caught loads of my fish uh, in the past on it. And also the Cremino, uh, the other boilie um, that I absolutely love from Baitworks. And I always like to combine a couple of different uh, styles and colors of boilies in the mix especially these two i found over the years that it works absolutely perfectly together and as we've said before on a new lake you've got to do something that you're confident in once i've crushed up a fair few of each of those boilies i also add in a couple of handfuls of whole ones just so there's some bigger items of bait there for the fish to uh, home in on as well after that i'll add in the pellets so i use the royal marine pellets as well such a potent flavor especially in those pellets uh, I'll probably added about a kilo and a half into this mix. As some of the fish in here are fairly new fish, as well as the old stockies, as I've mentioned. But yeah, the newer fish, they'll all be brought up all on pellets. So yeah, that's why I put them in as well. Then a small handful of the edge pellet as well, just the very small breakdown pellets. Uh, I've also used them in the solid bags. So I would like a tiny bit of that flavor attraction into the mix as well. And finally, the liquids. Absolutely love them to bits. Uh, they enhance your baits to a ridiculous, ridiculous level. Um, so in this mix, I've put in a good, good helping 
of the Royal Marine Bait Soak, the matching Cremino Bait Soak as well. Alongside that, I've also put a tiny splash of the Atlantic Heat Hot Fish Oil and the Liquid Fish, all complement each other absolutely perfectly. And as I said, the bucket is now sitting here beside me. The baits are soaking up, the pellets are soaking up all those liquids, ready for probably in about an hour and a half. The light fades and I'll be able to get a fair bit of this bait out along with the rods, refresh the bags, hoping for another eventful night. Well, it's not long now until it gets dark and uh, it has definitely dropped off a lot colder this evening. Um, already we are really feeling it. Uh, we've just had a really nice stir fry. Uh, that warmed us up a little bit but already it is very very cold and that wind is not helping. It's picked up a little bit which made getting the rods out a little bit difficult. I put all three rods on bags. They went out there pretty nice. Um, I'm pretty confident to be honest if it wasn't for the weather. Uh, that we're supposed to get. I think it said about minus four, which is uh, pretty crazy for this time of year. But yeah, pretty confident otherwise, hopeful more of a carp or two tonight. If not though, we'll both get tucked up in our sleeping bags, in separate sleeping bags. Um, sorry to disappoint you. Uh, we'll get tucked up in our sleeping bags and yeah, we will stay out this wind because it is absolutely freezing. Yeah, if those rods do decide to spring into life, I'm sure I'll be uh, up and ready to battle, hopefully, another really nice scaly carp. And who knows, maybe we can get our hands on, uh, on one of the originals, but I can only dream of that happening. We woke up this morning after quite a quiet night, to be honest, uh, nothing really to report. And uh, just before I went to sleep last night, uh, before it got dark really, I was uh, quite confident in catching a few, but uh, we woke up this morning and there were frost all over, all over the ground and the rods and mist rolling across the lake in the air. And uh, it was quite dramatic. It was quite beautiful, to be honest. But uh, yeah, as soon as it got dark, the wind dropped, the frost set in, and uh, it didn't really look very good at all, especially on this big, big pit. So yeah, like I said, nothing really to report. Early this morning, I also got picked up by, uh, by a tufty, which wasn't the best thing in the world. It meant I had to get my hands out my pockets and actually pick up the rods that were absolutely freezing. So um, yeah, I did, did two of the rods because it wiped out one of the others as well. So I redid them back on the spot, um, trying to be as quiet as I could so I only took two casts they went bang on so we're gonna hold it out for a couple hours this morning a slow pack down hoping for one last chance before we have to pack up reel in the rods and get back on the road back home down a bit further south uh, to hopefully then have a very nice warm shower because uh, yeah it is definitely very cold at the moment <laughs> Well, that's it. Just reeling in the last rod of the session, uh, of which it's been a very enjoyable session, to be honest. A couple of fish, and uh, yeah, those tactics that I was very confident in, luckily, paid off in the end. But uh, yeah, we're loading the trailer behind us as they get lifted to your swims, which is pretty cool on this place. And uh, we're just wondering as well, what would your initial tactic be? What are you confident in? Uh, when fishing a new water. Let us know in the comments below. We'll go through them, read them all, and uh, yeah, compare what we all think about fishing a big open pit. What would your tactics be 
when you first get on. But for now, I'll pack this one away, put it on the, on the trailer, then get back home to warm up. Oh, it's foaming! <laughs> what happened there? What have you put in your water to make it foam? There's nothing wrong with my kettle, as I can't put the lid on. There we go. You ready? Why is the steam coming out the top? There we go. Ready? To be honest, when I walked around here earlier, I'm lucky to stay on my feet. Uh, kind of off the back of the room. No, it's not. It is. I was just thinking, if Mozza was here, he'd probably copy these same tactics because... No, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I won't do it. And that's left. And short. There we go. Sorry, I just ruined your shot. No. No filming, Ben. No filming. Why are you running? Why are you running? Ready when you are, lad. Well, I'm ready. Are you ready? Hey, hey, hey. Good. Oh, reed stem. All right, brother. Oh, I'm cold. And I want to hit them with a frying pan. <laughs> Ducks diving on. Oh. That wounded it, wasn't it? Wounded it. Wounded it. Around three inches. <laughs> Quite long, actually. <clears throat> Shrink tube. Line and line. Line and liner. As well as that, I've got a small. <laughs> as well. <laughs> Sorry for, sorry for Ben editing right now. I do feel for you. Um, um, just make sure that... I don't... <laughs> that was difficult. <laughs>